Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we are talking about the 10 things you can do to win in your business. Now, this is any service business, but window cleaning, pressure washing, and I got you guys covered. So stay tuned to this episode of WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? First off, let me start by saying, if you've tried to text me at all in the past week, literally week, seven full days, our texting has been down, uh, SMS, um, federal regulation, BS stuff, literally didn't get any texts. No numbers at WCR was getting texts uh, with a WCR number. So, yeah. I'm not ignoring you, I swear. Uh, texts are back up and running. We are on another platform. Doesn't matter to you, but it matters to me because just as a fun fact, last month alone, I texted 6,066 times just from my work number. Anyway, I want to preface that because there's no way to tell everybody that I'm not a jerk. <laughs> That's just the, the only thing you can do is uh, assume I'm just not responding. So there you go. I do definitely apologize, but we're back baby. So if you need anything, I'll get to the shameless plug later, you know my number. But anyway, so today I thought I'd go over the 10 things that I would suggest to do if you want to win. Now, I thought it'd be fun to do 10 things to win. And then next week, do 10 things to fail. These are like the cornerstone pieces to companies that are really killing it. Versus companies that just aren't killing it. So I'm going to jump right into it. Right into it at number 10 is looking the part. That is one of the top 10 ways to win. Just look the part. Meaning you have to be professional. You have to have gear that's real, that's good, that shows that I should be paying you. Now, I am never going to hate publicly on anything that DIY. Because there's some DIY stuff that's out there that's really nice. I even like... Guys that take systems apart and kind of reconfigure them for wall mounts and things. By the way, secret is there is a wall mount coming up. But if you're building a thing to save a couple bucks and it looks like a dumpster fire, if it's made of wood, if it is like a hodgepodge crap that you're proud of yourself, cool. But if I paid you money to show up to my house and you showed up with some of these DIY monstrosities that I see... I just wouldn't feel right paying you to do that. Remember, what we do is we get paid for our professionalism. It's like, you know, if you had a an electrician come to your house or an HVAC guy and he comes with like, you know, something made of like wood and paint and like falling apart, you'd be like, what is this guy doing? I'm paying him a thousand dollars. Why is he not? Don't be cheap. Look the part. That means your uniforms, your trucks, your uh, apparel, just in general, but also your equipment. And I know I'm a sales guy, so that's what I'm supposed to say. But some of the stuff that you guys are so proud of, uh, listen, never hate on your ingenuity. Just if it looks homemade, it looks homemade, right? So understand, look the part to have the part. Number nine is upsell. The most big kind of well-run businesses focus on an upsell. That is always, 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 always there. Some of you go out there and go, yeah, they know. I I mentioned it. But what? 90 5% of all your customers do one service. And if you have other services like screen repair or roof cleaning, soft washing, blah, 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 everybody needs those things too. You have to be bringing that up. You can simply turn a, you know, $300 average ticket to a $600 average ticket by adding more services. These are customers that already like you. They already like you. They already trust you. They're using you. A lot of the times people don't want to have 20 different companies doing things when they could have one company that does them all really well. And I just really like this company. I'll have them do everything. And that's upselling. Do not forget upselling when you go to 
let people know. Because sometimes people think that, oh, if I'm upselling, I'm like pushing other services and all this. And it's not pushing other services. It's none of that. What it is doing is letting people know the other things you do because they just don't. And I've said this stat a bunch of times, but uh, I did um, a uh, survey for my customers one time. I forget how long it was, maybe six months or three months or something. And I put 10 services that I did. And outside window cleaning, inside and outside window cleaning, soft washing, you know, roof cleaning, gutter cleaning, all those things. And I thought I was really, really good at telling people all the things. Our site and brochures and... I mean, you know, every single time somebody got an invoice, they got multiple services in there. We brought it up. The average, the average out of the 10 was three. The average that people knew was only three of 10 services I did. I didn't do a good enough job letting people know. And you're probably not in it either. So open that up to letting people know the other services that you have. And it's not pushing it. It's just letting them know, right? Number eight in the top 10 of things to win is split test everything. This is one of the most disheartening things I do see sometimes pop up. And um, again, I don't know anything. Don't take this all for, you know, I'm telling you I know anything more than you because I don't. I'm just saying that I have this happen more times than not. When people go, hey, what should I do to advertise? We start talking about it. They're like, yeah, that doesn't really work. What do you mean? Well, I've had an ad out there on Facebook for like two months. I barely get anybody from it. What? You've had an ad for two months and you have not split test? Like you haven't changed things? You have to change your ads all the time. Like you have to find out what works, what triggers work in your area and what timing. And especially in digital media, it takes you 60 minutes and you can have a new ad approved. Do not be complacent in advertising. Do not be lazy. Do not be any of that stuff. And I get people that are like, hey, uh, I use your templates and it didn't work. Well, how did you do the advertising? And why do you think our templates are going to work for everybody across the entire country? Change some things. What you can do. Well, I printed all these. Okay. Well, then send them out the way they need to be sent out. And then the next batch change something. Like split testing is so absolutely important. There's not one thing that you have ever done, ever, that has been the best of that thing the first time. That's not advertising. That's not your logo or look or feel or everything merges. Everything changes as you go. Advertising has to be that way. You have to change everything. Split test everything. The number seven thing. I think ways to win is to always hustle. Now, you can still win if you're in a cruise mode, right? If you're just in the raft on the river, it's pushing you through, you're just taking a, a, a year or two just to kind of cruise, cool. You don't always have to be in a growth mode. But if you're not in a growth mode, you also don't get to look at another company and go, well, pff, how are they doing it? They're, they're hustling. They're doing it. Like, it's cool. You don't have to be in a growth mode all the time. In fact, it would burn you out if you did. But know that the ones that are rotate in growth modes and hustle like you've not seen before. No one falls into anything. Well, their market is better. And they probably had a bunch of money to invest. Or they had... The any of those things could have possibly been true, but in the same side as every company has some piece of the puzzle that was worse than yours. And the only thing you can control is your hustle. If you're poor, if you're in a small market, if you're new, if you're fill in the blank for any of the things that you have in your head that hold you back as an excuse, the one thing you always have is hustle. You can always Put in the effort. You can always put in the, the hustle to the game. Well, you know, they're, they're, they have money for advertising. Yeah, but they probably didn't always. And you still got to do the advertising. Guess what you could do? You could do door hangers. That's cheap. 
Like there's so many pieces to the puzzle of hustle you can do. And no one can take hustle away from you. If I have somebody who is, um, you know, out there doing whatever and they have knowledge, I could be smarter. If they know or say they have the best gear, I could buy better gear. Oh, they got logo and letter trucks. I can have newer trucks with better lugger. Like I can up anybody until it comes to hustle. Hustle is not something that I can trump because you can always be more. You can always do more. You can always hit that. The pinnacle of you and your hustle could be capped. You could do it. And I'm telling you, you have a little bit more room for it. Now, it takes time and it makes you tired. And, you know, all of those other things. Definitely. But it's how you win. Again, you don't have to be in a growth mode all the time. Growth modes are expensive. They're very exhausting. A real growth mode, man, you're doubling a company in a year. Like not just, oh, I fell into it, but like I'm actually doing this, right? It's really, really important to kind of have the differential. By the way, as a side note on that, you have to be out of the field in order to grow your company anywhere close to what you should be. If you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm still, I'm not growing so fast, and you're out there cleaning windows, that's why. What time do you have? You're out there cleaning windows for eight hours. Where do you, you maybe put in two hours of tired after the normal cleaning work to do towards your business. There's so many other pieces to business. Business is the thing. Window cleaning is just what you do. That might be a t-shirt. Make that into a t-shirt. <laughs> anyway, number six. Number six is be unique. Be unique. This one, I think, is so cloudy for people. Because what happens is, see what happened was, is you go out there and you see, okay, so and so, this is where all the window cleaners, they do this. They have, you know, I always joke, I used it, by the way, before uh, you get mad. But it's the uh, blue, dark blue water spot logo imaging, you know, like backdrop. Everybody uses that, right? The close-up of the squeegee going across, like everybody uses that. Everybody uses it. I should. If everybody does something, it is not unique and it's completely, completely ignored. Everybody that you've ever seen walking up the street, you've met outside, is wearing shoes. Everybody has shoes, doesn't matter. What happens when you notice shoes, and maybe you don't, maybe you're a guy, you don't care. I don't, but it came to mind, it could be anything else. But every piece of that, the thing you notice is when somebody's wearing like bright pink shoes, where you're like, whoa, that's way different. There's millions of different kinds of shoes out there, but you only notice when it's really different, right? Not everybody, but most everybody has a car. You drove to work today. You didn't notice anybody's car specifically unless it was like crazy. Man, that's like a one-of-a-kind car. If it was unique, you noticed it. If it was really amazing, you noticed it because it's unique. If something's not unique, it blends in. And if your business isn't unique, now I'm not saying you need to have like, you know, clown outfits on or, you know, whatever. You don't need to have dogs working with you or something crazy and weird. And you don't have to be odd to be unique. You just have to be unique. Unique just means you're the one that has that. Now, in all reality, there is no real unique. There's just less common, right? That pink pair of shoes you saw, there's thousands of those pairs around the world. You just don't see them a lot, right? That car that you think is so unique. There's only so many things you could do to a car. It's not that unique, right? Once you get into absurdity, then it's like, oh, that's a one-of-a-kind thing because it's so absurd. You don't have to do that. You just have to break the noise. You just have to be different than the other people. What does that mean? 
your guarantees, your logo, your values, the things you, you put on. Like, there's a hotel called Doubletree. Now, if you know this hotel, you already know the thing that makes it Doubletree, the, the, the thing that makes it unique. What? Yes, as soon as you check in, they give you fresh baked cookies. Now, that is something that's ridiculously simple. But every lobby smells like fresh baked cookies. And when you show up and book, they go, here you go. And you get your fresh, hot still cookies. It sounds like such a weird thing. What does that cost them? Actually cost them. Cents. A dollar. Maybe. But it makes them unique. Absolutely makes them unique. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be something to make you unique. Unique. People miss that. If they're not unique, they think somehow they magically can get the same thing done. They don't have to be unique because they're them. Um, the people like me because it's me. It's not really true. I know. Maybe your mom told you how special you are. But that's the thing they had to say. Really be special and see what happens. It's one of the ways that a company wins by far. Okay, got to stop real quick, do a quick shameless plug. If you're here, don't leave yet. Listen, I just want to say, if you did try to text me, genuinely sorry. If we didn't catch it in the beginning, our text had been down for seven days, finally came back up the day before I'm recording this. It absolutely uh, has been terrible uh, to have that down. So if you've texted me and I haven't texted you back, I'm sorry. Call me, 862-312-2026, or you can text now because I have that back. Uh, but I want to be your rep. If I have not lost you and you still uh, genuinely like the content or just want to give me a high five or, you know, help contribute to me at all, let me put your orders in. It costs you nothing extra. I would love to do that. Uh, I would love to uh, climb back out of this uh, week-long text garbage that's been happening. And I know I lost a lot of customers from that. So, uh, yeah. But if I could help you in any way, please do ask questions. Call me, text me, whatever. Let me put your orders in. Just click save this cart and name it Jersey or something. You get to name your cards. Name it that way and you can see. Let me know. My number is 862-312-2026. Let me know uh, when you're ready to order. I would love to put it in for you. Yeah. Also, if you haven't yet, go to the... American Window Cleaner Magazine website at awcmag.com and get the subscription to the magazine. Sticker sheets, magazine, new magazine to your door every single month for $69. You have an opportunity to be absolutely amazing and nerd out with the rest of us and be better and just absorb everything you can about the industry. Remember, what we do in this industry, this is like our college. So learn. Go to awcmag.com. Get the subscription. Okay. Back at it. We ended on number six, uh, being unique. And number five in the 10 ways to win is to look at the future and your current situation. Look at now and then. Both of them. Sometimes people get too blinded in the nows. This is where like door knocking, you know, where people are like, I door knock because after a day I can get some money of jobs. Okay, that you have a job, but like you've given a bad vibe. You've upset more people than you've actually signed up. They just don't like it. You've never ever started a conversation ever by showing up at somebody's house and trying to sell them something. Yeah, maybe at the end they're like, all right, we could do it. No one's ever happy with that. If you think they're happy with that, you don't own a house or you don't rent a house, or you don't have a place where people will bug you trying to sell you everything. I don't like that. I like the long term. I'm building a business. The business is the long term. But too many people focus on the now. I got this customer, I gotta find another one. I don't, you know, I don't focus on the repeat. I don't focus on the experience. I don't focus on what makes people wanna refer me. There's people out there that are getting referrals like absolute insanity. They have armies of people that are preaching to the choir. They're, they're telling everybody how awesome they are. They've earned that. They've earned that. Right? So you need to earn that also. 
Like you need to look at now, but also the future. Like what is going to be good in the future? Like what do you have to do now? Oh, I got to change this thing and, you know, the guys are going to be happy. Yeah, but it's better for the whole company. Well, we, we did do the dentist clothes and, you know, it didn't really work out. So we don't, we don't really do it too much. Well, what? That's the, the company. The business is built on that. Focus on now. But don't lose sight of the future. The future is what the company is. The now is just the job. The now is just what you're making money on. There's so many pieces to this the business thing. You could work on your business always. Always. And still have more. I, I do... Uh, some of you know, I don't talk about it too often. I do private coaching on the side. But I have people who have been with me for years, years. And every time we have something, every week is absolutely different, something else to work on. There's so many pieces, you cannot do everything at one time. I got some people who are working on 10 different uh, task items right now. I have other people who are so busy, they can't barely do one task item right now. Like, to work on the future of the company is as important, if not more important, than the now. The now is how you pay your bills and your staff and your whatever and your growth, but the future is how you sustain that. Don't lose sight of both of them because they're absolutely important. And how do you do that? Well, number four is plan. So many people who are winning in this game have plans. They plan. Cool, marketing calendar. What does it look like for you? Oh, you don't have one? Okay. Well, what's the plan? Well, someday, I, that's not a plan. That's a dream. Right? We talk about this all the time. A thought is a dream. That's great. It would be cool. To, but, but a plan is how you're going to get there. I mean, I'd like to go to California. That's a dream. I've typed in 123 Fake Street in California and into my GPS. That is a plan. I know exactly how I'm going to get there. Now, there may be accidents along the way. It'll recalculate. But I know exactly how I'm getting there. Plan everything. That can change. Some people are so scared of this planning thing because they're like, well, how do I know what I'm going to do in five years? You don't. But you know where you want to be in five years. A month from now, you know where you want to be in five years. A year from now, you know where you want to be in five years. Five years from now is different than five years from a year from now. That, that would be six years from now. Five years or 12 months or whatever the plan is always is the same distance. It just moves, right? The whole block moves. You can always be planning for five years. You will never get to five years because it's always five years out. But you'll get to the now. See how the future then turns to the now. And if you have all this, it's all in a plane. You know how you're getting there. Always plan. How do you do that? The easiest, best way that you can do that and win is systemize. Systemize and systems is boring. I know. But systemizing everything you do is how you achieve greatness. Systemizing means you're getting more done in less time with less thought meaning that you can exercise your brain on other things. If you're doing like follow-ups, we talk about um, uh, responsibility. Uh, absolutely awesome. Actually, if you're watching this in the video, I think there's a link down. Uh, I've known those guys forever. They're phenomenal. Responsibility is amazing for your site. But they have a follow-up builder, meaning that like when somebody gets a quote, I always call them the next day. Hey, how's everything? No, yeah, we're just kind of looking okay. It's already going to set up. Then in 24 hours, I get an email. Then three days, I get an email. A week, they get an email. Like That's systemizing things. Okay, when somebody calls and goes, hey, I'm looking for a quote. What does it look like? How does your phone bid work? Do you have everything? Is it done the exact same way? Because when somebody calls, I don't have to go, oh, let me, um, let me think if I'm missing anything. Uh, what else do I need to add? It's all done. Boom. Awesome. Let's get you that quote. What's your address? I know everything because it's systemized, right? When do I do my Facebook ads? When do I change my Facebook ads? When do I... All of those things, if they're systemized, they get done. They get done better, more efficiently, faster, and you don't forget things. Systemizing, people just assume is just like, oh, you got to be a robot. To but Understand that if I don't have to think about things and I can just like, oh, on Tuesdays I do this for 30 minutes. That 30 minutes, because it's planned and there's a system to it, everything gets done 
I don't forget things and I can get so much more done than if I have to start every single day by going, okay, what am I going to do today? Right? All right, I show up at a house. What am I going to do today when I like systemize things? You get more done. A better system is a stronger company and that's how you win. You're trying to build a stronger company. Speaking of a stronger company, the number one thing that you can do for new business, number one across every business, window cleaning especially, because there's always people. We're always getting a new flux of people. We're always getting new customers. They're either leaving somebody else or they're new, uh, new to the area, new to the home, new to the whatever. It's SEO. SEO, search engine optimization for your website, which can't be a pile of garbage, but SEO is how people find you. It's how people find you. If you're not doing SEO, you're like, yeah, I rank pretty well. You don't. You rank pretty well for doing nothing. But that's like saying, yeah, I'm a pretty fast runner when I don't run. What? What if you trained to run? What if you hired a professional trainer? It's the same with SEO. If you think you're doing SEO or you're ranking well, understand there's millions of combinations of words people search. You just search window cleaning in my area or whatever. A, are you in a incognito mode? If you are in everything and you ranked well for that, great. Search a bunch of terms. Guessing other people are ranking. The only way to be better is to hire somebody who's amazing and can do that. Remember, we talk systems. Don't have to do it yourself. If you got a bunch of time, you want to do little things, kind of catch up on top of that, fine. But the best information I could ever give you, ever, when it comes to just new business, new customers, is find a company that does SEO and pay them forever to do SEO. It sounds absolutely ridiculous, but if you get into an SEO plan that's good, and there's a lot of garbage out there, unfortunately, I've been screwed, I know a bunch of people have. But if you get into that, it's an ongoing cost. It's just the cost of doing business and the cost of people finding you. And now all of a sudden, you're getting in ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 worth of new work every month. That's on top of the repeat, on top of the customers, on top of the upsells, on top of the everything. That machine works. That means the other people aren't getting that. That's you not doing anything. You just pay a company. Every time I talk about SEO, you guys ask again, but it's I always bring up um, Monk SEO uh, is the dudes that um, I've had phenomenal results. Not that everybody's going to have as amazing results as I got, but it literally blew me away of all the companies. But if you hire a crap company, they will take your money and nothing will happen. Do not sit on that. Do not get an SEO company and then like a year or two later be like, yeah, it's doing it. No, find a good company. If you just want to talk to somebody, by the way, all the time, not a plug for them, but call Monk SEO, uh, shoot them a message, Facebook, whatever. Bobby's on the podcast all the time. Um, I mean, they will answer any questions about it, even if you're not using their services, but get SEO. SEO in general is absolutely the best thing to get that it's reoccurring. It's always out there. It's always finding new people and it's always outranking everybody. So many companies we look at and it's like, oh, like you're doing good, but do you think you're doing the best you ever could? If no, then do better. And the number one way that you can win is repeat customers. Because I think that this is beyond SEO and new stuff. If you've been in business, every time you get a customer, you go out and look for another customer. Can you see how blurred that vision is? If you get a customer, you go, all right, well, let's go find another customer. And you just don't look at that. Well, they'll call me when the repeat are the guys that are exploding. I'm talking about multiple multipliers. I'm talking about these guys are doing 100% increases, 200% increases over the year. That is like insane. The reason is because they've gone from no focus on repeat to focus on repeat. If you have every customer you 
dictate when they call you back, meaning you get them back in that six months. We talk about the dentist close. I'm not going to get into that. That will change your life. I guarantee. I guarantee when you're confident in the uh, dentist clothes and you're confident in this repeat thing, it will absolutely change your mindset and you will win. Thousand percent. Anyway, you're winning regardless. I am losing because my text message thing has been down. So if I could win you back and somehow place your orders for you, I would love that. My number is 862 312 2026. Save my number. Call me. Text me. It's back. Uh, let me know what I can do for you. I'd love to put the orders in. Literally cost you nothing extra to do that. And man, it would really, really help me out. Um, so I really appreciate that. And again, the magazine, American Window Cleaner Magazine, awcmag.com. Go there. Get a subscription. Be as awesome as I think you can be. Until next week. Listen to the 10 ideas or ways to win, but more importantly, go out there and be